I don't feel like I'm in a place where I'd actively pursue it, but I do feel like, you know, life is, people want to say life is short, and in some ways it is, but it's mm -hmm. also pretty long. And it's like, long. you know, the idea of just being with one person in a lot of ways just seems so like, not possible or like mm. I don't know like because there are just so many really cool amazing people out there and like I do think that part of the appeal of polyamory is that idea you talked about where it's like it can reinvigorate your love for someone else yeah um, because I did a relationship science class and something that we talked about was like you know is passion something that's sustainable mm. um, and they a lot of people were arguing that like no after a certain period of time like that's why they say that like you should marry someone that feels like your best friend because mm. they eventually do turn into your best friend because that's what happens when passion subsides mm. um, but then I think polyamory does add that in interesting layer of um, potentially being that thing that could rekindle your relationship but yeah. yeah like I'm curious about your transition from being that person that Ooh. wasn't about it to being about it I've got so much to say so much yeah. um <laughs> so for me I think my coming into polyamory really um coincided with me actually growing to like myself more mm. um like so for the longest time when I was younger um, you, a lot of the men who would approach me were already married or, um, you know, had a girlfriend of some sort and they really wanted some sort of like, you know, come to, you know, this hotel room or, you know, my wife's out of town, we can do this sort of thing. And that was just what was offered to me so frequently. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think I, I started with this like foundation of, um, this can't possibly be all I can ever get. You know, I deserve more than that, but mm -hmm. I didn't really, really believe that at the time. Um, and so for me, I know I just wanted to prove to myself at one point that I could be in a normal relationship where I've got this monogamous person that I'm with who I love and this all da 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 and I'm not engaging. I mean, I didn't, I mean, when I was younger and married people would contact me, I always said no because I had a very big thing about karma, you know, yeah. and I was like, I never want that to happen to me, yeah. so I'm not going to do that to, to you know, who, who you're with. Um, but I just got so sick of that, that being my only approach, so I was hyper-focused on finding a, a consistent relationship that is monogamous. Um, and so, you know, but like I was around this time, I was going through different like transition things. I was also, you know, figuring out what I was going to do with my life. There's just a lot of stuff that I was figuring out. And I didn't really feel like a full person. Um, I didn't really start to feel like a full person until I graduated college. And then I started to um, travel for, um, for, for speaking, actually, because after I got a graduated college, I did get into a monogamous relationship. And it was one where we moved to Orange County. I didn't know. Orange County. Yes. <laughs> I grew up in L.A. County. We moved to Orange County where he was working. I was working from home at the time. So it kind of made sense. I lost all of my friends. Um, I was not around my family who I was. I'm not very close to anyway. But, you know, that's someone to talk to at least. And he was my end all be all and everything. Um and the people who I did know out there were like his friends. And so I felt very, very isolated. And then when I started traveling and speaking, it was like, oh, wow, my world is becoming larger. When I started going to conventions and things, and I started my um, YouTube channel became more successful. I started to meet more people and my world became larger. Um, and I started to really like myself a lot. You know, I, um, I had been in a certain um, trajectory in terms of feeling like a full person and you know especially when it comes to like finishing transition and all that stuff and at this point in my life I definitely started to feel like a fuller rounder person and through that I very much started to understand that I did not need a man to anchor me to feel like a valid full well-rounded person say it again um, say it again <laughs> and you know it's I think so for me, a lot of when people have reactions to the people that they're with, um, and I still feel this way, so I'm not saying I'm, I'm pure, but um, when they have reactions to people that they're with wanting, <clears throat> having interest in other people, a lot of that has to do with insecurity, you know? And I do have real bad, like, um, I have a really bad thing about people deserting me, so I'm very much like still <laughs> unpacking a lot of that stuff. Um, yeah, how are you insecure in polyamory? That's that's well, it's like, very or, 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 or like oh no, I'm sorry, not insecure, but like how do you 
Yeah, how does, like, how cheating... How do you manage it? Like, how do you deal with the insecurity? Like, yeah, that's... that's... I mean, not very well. I mean, some people de- deal with it better than others. Um, for me, like, towards the end of my last relationship, like, without getting into deep detail, like, I really... Re- I recognized that my ex was kind of maybe into some stuff that I really wasn't. And I recognized that, like, you know, I really love this person. I mean, so it was two ways. It was like, A, I wanted to do stuff that he didn't want to do. And he wants me to do stuff that I would have, I would never do. Um, and so I was like, you know, I love you. That doesn't change, you know, these things. Knowing this about what you like does not change how I feel about you. But I also know it's a hard no for me. But because I love you, I'm okay with you finding that with someone else. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think for me that kind of came from this this point of love for him and understanding that, you know, even though we were doing things with other people, well, we never did because of course his response to me saying that was like, Oh no, I only ever want to be with you. I was like, Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Um, but um, I knew that like at the end of the day, I wanted him to have those experiences. And I also felt that if he loved me, um, he would let me to have, allow me to have some of those experiences as well because life was so short. We started dating when I was 21. Mm. I just turned 28. Like I, like there was a lot of stuff that like I you know, like wanted to do when I was younger, they just didn't want to do with me. And I feel like maybe we would have probably still been together. Um, I mean, I wouldn't date him now, but like, I think if we had that conversation, maybe it would have changed to where we were still together. Um, People are insecure all the time. I mean, there's still for a lot of people that fear of like, what if he meets someone better than me? Um, What if, you know, they connect in a way, like I, like one of my partners, his wife, um, well, he's divorced now, but his wife um, and him decided to allow this guy to come into their relationship. And he could almost notice, like, immediately that, like, they connected in a way that they ju- that him and his wife just didn't. And slowly but surely, um, it ended up being a thing where he felt very pushed out of the relationship. And then they started dating. Um, and now they're monogamous. They're not Damn. even poly. Mm. So it's like a thing where it's po- it's possible to still be insecure um, in poly relationships because sometimes that's the fear is that you'll find someone better and then you'll still leave them. Um, I mean, for them, I know there was basically a lot of miscommunication. She had certain rules about his polyamory that weren't in line with what he wanted to do. So there was a lot of, um, I guess, resentment in ways because they were open but not really, you know. Interesting. And so... I know that um, in, in both situations, his marriage and mine, it was unfair. Oh, well, no, I wasn't married, but my relationship. It was unfair to almost look at this one person as like the end all be all for everything. Um, and to me, that's also where Polly comes from as, as well, is that I know that it's unfair for me to say like this one person has to be all of the things that I want slash need slash desire slash are curious about. I enjoy that I have different partners who maybe do this but don't do that and the the other ones who do this and do that and then like at some point if we really wanted to we could all hang out with each other and it's good i like that interesting that's like because that's my biggest thing is that like i i don't think i could do it i think i could do it if i'm not emotionally invested in someone because that's that's essentially what people who aren't poly are doing like as as far as like a guy we kind of talked about it in the last episode where as far as like men goes there's a lot of insecurity Mm -hmm. with just like other partners exactly Mm -hmm. not only emotionally but physically too of just like Mm -hmm. man what if you're she's getting it better than the next guy and i'm just (laughs) Mm -hmm. like kicked to the curb like it's it's a lot of it's insecurity but also it's the case where a lot of guys i feel like emotionally not they they'll be like why would i go through all the trouble of investing emotionally in you if you're Mm -hmm. giving it up for other people. Yeah. So it's like, I could be with multiple people. It's not a problem, but those are the people I have fun with. I'm not Mm -hmm. investing in my emotions in this person. So I think that's the the fear of like, okay, Mm -hmm. I'm going to invest in that, but then you're everyone's with everybody.